Hello, I'm Ben Porter, and I'm going to explain Docker layers and the way caching works to you with, an, with a quick example. So on the left here is kind of an, a naively written Docker file. I intentionally kind of kept it simple, but also intentionally made a few mistakes, or not really mistakes, but just suboptimal decisions. So that way we can improve it and get a good lesson on Docker file layers. The way that Docker file layers work is that each one of these commands, basically each line where a Docker file command is run, so like workdir, copy, run, user, each one of those commands will generate one layer in our image. And an image is made up of every layer stacked on top. Each lower layer is made up as a diff or a delta between itself and the previous layer. So it's kind of like Git with a Git repository where uh, you can't, you couldn't access you know, this layer without having all the previous layers because this layer doesn't contain an entire snapshot of what the image will look like. It's just the diff between this layer, whatever was changed, and the previous layer. So in a Docker file, each time, I mentioned each time you run a command like this, you get a new layer. So uh, at the top of this Docker file, we start with from Fedora 32. And we don't necessarily know how many layers there are in Fedora 32. Uh, so we'll just call that n. But you know, for sake of concrete example, let's say that there's 10 layers. When we run the, the first instruction here, workdir slash 2048, that is going to create another layer. So we'll have layer n plus 1, which in this concrete example would be layer number 11. The next line adds another one. So we get layer number 12, then layer 13, layer 14, etc. So each one of these commands adds a layer. Now, when you're building Docker files, each layer takes a hash of all of its contents. So as long as nothing changes, Docker knows that it can just use the previously built cached version of that layer as long as nothing in that layer has changed and none of its parents have changed. If we were to make a change down here on line 11 and rebuild, then the first few layers here up until line 11 would be built from cache and then each layer down here would need to be rebuilt again even if it didn't change because its parent changed. So a nice way to kind of visualize that um, would be, so we've got a Docker file and it has no changes in it, so it's already been built. And the next time you build it, each one of these layers can be built from cache. If we were to make a change, however, so for example, let's say we change some of the source code, which is an extremely common thing to do when you're developing an application. The layer where the source code gets copied in and then all child layers will now be invalidated. So they will have to be built again. If we change something even higher up, so in this case, we've now added some more dependencies to install with DNF. Now all of these layers are going to be invalidated and have to be rebuilt. So if we look back at our example here, there's a couple of implications as far as optimizing and, and making a nice build. So before we get into it, let's, let's build this. So we can see that it's got to install a bunch of dependencies with DNF, and I'm gonna speed up the video so that it appears to go faster, uh, but this normally takes several minutes to download and install, so it's quite time consuming. So we just waited a few minutes for dependencies to install, and then we compile our application, and then we have to install more dependencies, so we now get to wait a couple more minutes. All right, so our build has finally finished, and it took quite a while. The good news is, because each of these layers has now not changed, if we rebuild again, you'll see it should build entirely from cache. And I'm not going to speed up the video this time, so this is actually how long it would take. Notice it went very quickly. It's already done. So we're developing, and we make a change to our source code. So this will help kind of illustrate the problem here. So I'm going to change the code, 
and now I want to rebuild. Notice that the first part builds from cache, but then the point at which we copy the source code occurs very early on in our Docker file. And after we copy the code, we make we run some instructions that are time consuming and take a lot of time. And installing these dependencies doesn't actually change very often. So it's kind of silly to have them in this order where the caching from above is not useful and we have to rerun these expensive instructions every time. So we can reorder this to make it much more efficient. While that's building, let's reorder this. So first thing we can do to optimize this is we're, we're running DNF several times here. Since every command in this file is a new layer, we can combine these layers, or we can combine these DNF commands, so that way we're only creating one layer, because we don't need an entirely new layer for each one. We can also clean up some of the metadata that we leave on the disk after we're done installing packages. Now this is going to build, or this is going to run DNF a few times. We can actually combine these lines here to make it a little faster. And we can run the update first. And there we have it. So now we're doing all of this installation before we're copying our, our source code over. That's going to be a lot more efficient. Now, whenever we make changes to our source code here, all we have to do is recompile that and then run each of these steps each time to build our image. And these steps all go pretty fast. So we'll be taking advantage of the way, Docker's do, uh, the way Docker does file cache or layer caching. Okay, so we've made our file changes. The first time we build it, it's got to run all the DNF commands again because I busted the cache by changing them. So I'm going to speed this up. Okay, the build has finished the first time. So now let's simulate as though we're developing. So let's go back into our source code, make a change, add that print line back. So we have to recompile the file and the cache from this point onward is now busted. So it's got to repeat it. But because we restructured our Docker file, the expensive part at the top with DNF will be built straight from cache. So I can run it there. And you can see there's not even any need to speed up the video because it runs fast enough that it's not a big deal. So there you have it. That's a quick explanation of Docker caching. If you want to learn more about containers and Docker, um, I highly recommend watching my intro to containers videos. It's a couple hours of a uh, pretty big overview of containers and I walk you through all kinds of stuff. So highly recommend it. Thanks for watching.